And I am Greg Wester, and I'm the product manager for Apex Debugger, Platform Developer Tools, Force.com IDE, and the Developer Console. Today, I want to talk to you about uh, the real-time debugging capabilities within Salesforce. Standard safe harbor statement, uh, don't make any purchasing decisions or decisions about Salesforce based on what is in this presentation today. Um, so what do we do when we're platform developers? Um, I think a lot of times we feel like this person in this image here who's fixing a bug in production. Um, it's miracle work in, in many cases. We have a, a business to support. Um, it's helped people to support, and as developers, we're looking for tools to help debug emergent behaviors of the platform. And I think that this very much captures what a lot of us do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so when we think about um, how we ensure that our code is working properly, how we ensure our business logic works well on the platform, we have sort of three areas of assurance. Uh, the first one is always our Apex unit tests, and of course we have uh, very high test code coverage requirements uh, just to help us ensure that you know one plus one does in fact equal two under all circumstances. Um, beyond that, we have the Apex debug log, so we can walk through any execution of our code, and we can leave little breadcrumb trails behind. We can leave debug logs, and we can sort of trace uh, what was happening in a particular request or request type. Um, beyond that, we have a, a brand new feature which I'm focusing our talk on today, which is the Apex real-time debugger. So this is the ability to really stop a request and follow its execution without needing to know ahead of time where it's going to land. So we can follow the emergent behaviors of something, especially if there is an error or unknown case or if we're just not sure uh, exactly what path the code is taking. Um, this is a little bit different. Uh, to how we might program traditional Java or C Sharp or something else because in those instances we can have a Java virtual machine or some other runtime on our system, but we can't give you an entire um, instance or runtime of Salesforce on your local machine. Uh, by nature, Apex code is deployed into the cloud and compiled in the cloud. So uh, what we need to do is uh, provide you with uh, an environment where you can stop and trace these things. And so the reason that this is a licensed feature or a limited feature uh, that everyone can't be using it all at the same time is that this is really like a least line for your particular request that you want to debug. Um, maybe a good analogy would be um, in San Francisco if you wanted to have a, a marathon and you wanted to close down a large number of streets for a period of time, you have to sort of apply for a permit and say, like, do it on these days. And, of course, everyone can't um, have their block party and their event and their street fair on the same day as your marathon and all will be able to get through. Uh, the debugger is somewhat similar. We're going to allow you to take um, 10 minutes for what normally would take 10 milliseconds for Salesforce to execute. Um, so the scarcity of this resource, the sort of bending a multi-tenancy, letting someone uh, take more time than it should to do something is the reason why this is... Um, you know, not the first tool you may use. We do still want you to use unit tests and debug logs. This is for um, other circumstances where you really want to reproduce exactly some emergent behavior in production, um, which is a common occurrence. I think anyone who has a large application on Salesforce has run into this. Um, so what do we do as developers when we're fixing a bug or fixing an application? Uh, normally we get a bug report from um, someone maybe on our sales team or um, a regular user who has made a request and doesn't think something looks right either uh, an execution limit happened or you know some other error state happened essentially the behavior was not as expected so then when we get this bug report um, we sort of wear two hats right we try to be the business user we try to reproduce the issue as they saw it and then the developer side of us needs to make sort of a second request uh, in this real-time debugging case, which is to sort of trap that and introspect it. And so I'm going to be demonstrating for you uh, exactly how that's done. Just notice in particular that 
you know, the things that happen in production and where we're going to target them, where we're, we're going to reproduce them as in sandbox. So the real-time debugger is a product at this time um, for the sandbox environment. So let me show you a small application I wrote, which uh, I think has some bugs in it. Okay, so what we have here is a small application I wrote. Um, it talks to a third-party service. Um, this is an application for registering students in a driving school, and it's going to reach out to an e-commerce site where people pay for those schools. And what I'm going to do in Salesforce is try and um, assign an instructor uh, to one of the students who's enrolled. And something's not quite going right. Um, I put some debug logs but couldn't quite figure out what was going on because it's interacting with a third-party system. I need to really see in real time what's happening. Um, so I have this fired up to a sandbox environment and let's go ahead and start a debugging session. I'm switch over to my debug tab. And what I'm going to do is create a new debug configuration. And I can go down to remote Apex debugging here. And I can say I want you to create a new debugging configuration for my driver app. Uh, optionally, I can say I want to whitelist certain types of requests. So if this is sort of a, a busy sandbox environment, other people are using it, and I want to make sure that I isolate my thing, I can either isolate it to a specific user ID who's going to make the request, or I can make it specific to a, a certain request type. Uh, but today, it's just me on here, so I'm just going to go ahead and create this default configuration. And what I can do is um, go ahead and tell it to um, start a new debugging session, which looks like it already has. So now I'm connected to a um, live data center, and I have a frozen connection to an app server, a frozen connection to a database, and I'll be able to introspect this however I like. So um, let's go ahead and put a breakpoint somewhere. Maybe we'll start with HTTP, because I think something strange is happening between my third-party system in Salesforce. And what I'll do is um, go back to my leads page, uh, create a new lead in the system. This is someone who's a student who needs an instructor, so I'm going to go ahead and reach out to the third-party system and assign them an instructor. And when I do that, this request is going to hang in the browser because what's happened is the IDE is attached to it. The IDE is arrested that request. So instead of this completing very quickly, maybe in 100 milliseconds, we're going to take our time and walk through it and see exactly what's going on. And if I look up in the top right window here, I can sort of see some of my variables that are in the stack. And so as I step through this program execution, um, more variables will pop up as they are assigned. Um, so what's neat about this is I can see my request and how it's being formed, and I can even start to look into whether or not this is the um, request I thought I was sending. And then what's even better is I can see the response. And so when I see it, like a, like a normal debug log, and then I might come back like a big JSON string with 81 elements in it, and that's sort of hard to read. Um, what gets nicer about this is as I um, assign this um, into something, I can actually see each one of these instructors picked apart. So I can even see if I'm getting a valid list of things back, and I can walk through it in real time and figure out if there's, um, you know, different variables or different elements in here that I wasn't expecting. Um, so this is a, this is sort of a nice thing for us. Um, something that I get confused about a lot is triggers. And so if something strange is happening with a trigger, um, I can go ahead and walk into that logic and actually see it happen live. So sometimes I get confused if something's before insert or after insert or before update or after update. 
and in this case, I'm able to really step through and see each little piece of that and understand exactly when um, the different pieces of my trigger are going to happen. So in this case, when we have a new instructor coming to the system, we assign them as a contact. Um, so the, the real-time debugger lets us step through code and the exact execution that the platform does without needing to sprinkle debug logs um, in all random places in our code base and not really know where it's going to end up. So when we think about errors in applications, um, you know, it should be so simple. Like, why can't we just write code and why can't it be, you know, perfect the first time if we've unit tested it? What's different between my developer org versus my sandbox versus my actual production environment? Um, so we have metadata, which is our Apex classes and triggers and our lightning components and our visual force pages. Um, we have data, which is literally the, the, the contents of our organization. Um, and so some of our assumptions that we make in development may not be true when we get to an environment with data like a full sandbox or a partial sandbox. Um, that could just be that our algorithm is only expecting there to be no more than a million records in a certain um, entity type like account or contact. And all of a sudden we discover that when there's more than that, um, you know, we may run out of a certain limit or our algorithm may not be as efficient as we thought it was when it gets to that scale. Uh, a third piece is managed code. So what happens when we have um, things that we download from the app exchange and install inside of our organizations? Um, very safe harbor. Um, this fall we'll be doing a pilot for ISV independent software vendors to help do um, debugging of managed code with customer code. So this is a, a cooperative type of support. If you're a vendor on the platform, you'll be able to, um, with the customer's permission, have um, delegated access to the customer source code, and then you can combine it with your software as a as a software vendor, and you can uh, download both of these into the IDE and step through them and watch the interaction of a particular request as it steps from the customer's code into the managed code and backwards. Um, at present, all we see right now is sort of this obfuscation. We can't see what's happening inside of the managed code. Um, the reason I think that's going to be a really breakthrough feature is that, um, you know, even if you do every single thing about Salesforce today, if you are a platform expert, um, MVP, you know, start community member, you know everything about Salesforce, um, it's really difficult to write a set of code that will work inside a thousand or more subscribers' implementations. Um, even if you have, you know, perfect knowledge of everything from today backwards, you don't know what the platform is going to be like uh, next year, two years from now, three years from now, and so there may be bugs that emerge as Salesforce evolves. And so um, knowing what we know today, we, we can't always write perfect code. This is going to be an amazing tool for helping um, ISVs and subscribers work together to um, debug issues and produce better packages on the platform. So there'll be a lot more about this. Um, leading up to Dreamforce and at Dreamforce. So just a few things about um, the Apex real-time debugger. It is generally available and has been for um, over six months, almost a year now. Um, licenses are assigned by a perm set. So you can decide, um, you know, within your organization, you know, maybe system administrators are going to have this but essentially it's sort of a floating license. Um, normally the limit is just sort of one per organization because you can only have one concurrent debug session per sandbox. So if you take an example where um, your customer and you have one full sandbox, one partial sandbox, and 100 developer sandboxes, if you had three licenses, you could concurrently be using one session in the full sandbox, one session in the partial sandbox, and then one session in any of your um, developer sandboxes, but what you couldn't do is have two concurrent IDE sessions um, inside of a single sandbox. 
Another caveat is that if somebody changes metadata within the org or within that sandbox while you're doing a debug session, that initiates a recompile and your session will be dropped. So in other words, you'll need to restart your debugging session if someone else is deploying while you're debugging. Um, again, currently this is only supported in the sandbox environments. We do not plan to support it in production pods. Um, also currently this doesn't work with asynchronous Apex. So if you have um, batch jobs, certain types of email things, things that go to the background, um, these are not possible to debug at present. It's for synchronous code. Um, trials are handled through uh, your account executive. There's a, a way for you to um, sign up for this and you can try it before you purchase it. I want to thank you for listening to our presentation on Apex Debugger today and um, let me know if I can help you with it. Thank you.